We were waiting on lambs to come. And then one morning I walked outside and I caught a glimpse of all those tiny little legs in between the tarps. I think your baby may want some food, Hetty. We thought we might have them by morning, but we weren't able to stay up all night to check. And by the time we were up, there they were. I tried to stay up all night. They came right in that short window that I fell asleep. Well, we've got a lot of ground to cover on this episode, so let's get right in and start talking about those lambs before we get to everything else. It was a little boy and two little girls. So they woke up to a bright and sunny day for their first day. I came around that corner and they're just standing there shivering, trying to figure out what's going on. Ah, yawn. Up and get them in their temporary lambing jugs so they could have some bonding time with mom. And they were little cute bundles of stumbling energy. Did any of them stand out to you right away, Em? Well, they all stood out for different reasons. Um, we were hoping for triplets, but it was still surprising to walk out to them. They stumble around and are trying to figure things out. Hetty's a veteran mom, so we didn't have a lot of worries about her being able to feed them, but we did have to give the lambs a bit of help to figure out how to eat and where to go. We did a lot of things like making sure that we used iodine on their umbilical cords to and shortening them. Drying them off all of the way, though we had a lot of sunshine to help with that. They were very wet still. Then we wanted to make sure that they each had figured out how to feed some so they could all get some colostrum in. Pepper was curious and I think she was attracted by some of the afterbirth and blood material. So she actually ventured into the sheep pen with the mom and the babies, which is very adventurous for her. First day is all about learning what life outside of mom is about and all of the strange new sights and smells involved in it. The early spring sun was warming and relaxing and they all loved laying in the sunny patches in the hay between feeding times. I was really worried about them at first just because I have never done this before, so I laid in there with them in the straw for quite a while, trying to make sure that they were all learning how to feed and that they were all able to uh, get a little bit of rest in between being up and moving around. They were quite tired at first, but they were taking short naps, maybe 15 minute naps, and they would have a lot of energy and they would expend it and nap again. We could always tell when they had latched on to feeding for a time because of their little, cute little tail waggies. I sure do find a lot of joy in having baby lambs around. I didn't know that that was going to be a thing that I liked in my life, but I'd rather be with them most of the time than most of the people out in the world. I'll tell you that right now. They're already starting to get their springs. The little boy is Abraham Maximus, father of many nations. We have Mehedabel, which means Yahweh brings joy in Hebrew. And then we have Penina, which is pearl in Hebrew. Stay tuned after the episode's credits for some sneak peeks at upcoming topics on our channel. Now, I've been working on this January 6th Patria protest painting. And uh, I'm going to start to get you guys caught up every episode with a, a little bit of updates on where we're at now and how we got there. First thing I've gone and done is headed in and added some blue into the sky. I'm just starting to set in some basic tones. It's going to be an awful lot of activity, so I need to make the right choices now. 
in just a bit you'll see I start to lay in a bit of red. Now I don't want the red to be overwhelming in this, and this isn't going to be the final red. Final red will be on top of a few layers, but I'd like to start blocking in uh, crowds a little bit and some of the flags and this whole thing with Trump getting arrested is just as silly as the whole thing with January 6th if you ask me. Well they made a mistake didn't they? And they know it. They got that TDS, that Trump derangement syndrome. Trump's good for this country and everybody knows it. They don't want this country to be here. That's what we're up against. They're up against half of the country who wants the country to be gone. They'll make up some new rules, that doesn't matter. They don't care. What's true in one month can be completely different in another month. It's all flexible to them. They just don't care. That's why I had to start doing what I'm doing now and just being really careful who I work for and being really limited on how I spend my time for people. These people have broken hundreds of years of precedent over nothing, nothing at all. And then I'll, now I'm seeing headlines where Biden's saying, oh, People on the right wing are breaking precedents with what they're doing. Well, they better buckle up because there's going to be a lot more of that coming now. This is terrible for our country. This is just terrible. Even if conservatives decide to give them a taste of their own medicine, that, that still helps the leftists. You know that, right? Because now we're throwing everything out. All decorum. All civility. Now, I got a lot of reasons not to be civil with other people right now in this country, but once a snow holds bar, anything goes, laws don't matter, reality doesn't matter, we're just gonna try and do every crooked thing to everybody else. We don't have a country anymore. That's the goal of the left. Everybody knows it, people on the left, they'll gladly admit it. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. What we're working on here, it's an illustration. That's a commission, so this one's already sold. And um, this is a panorama view of Abraham Lincoln overlooking a beautiful valley. And I took a, some painstaking care in this one. This is one of my black and white India ink water washes that you guys have seen so many of before. Uh, I do sell these on this channel uh, to help support our homestead, help support our family. Um, you can find a link in the description below for some of the existing ones, and I'm going to be adding quite a few more in coming weeks during April. Here, look at some of that fine brushwork I'm doing here in India Ink with my Winsor Newton Series 7 Number 2 brush. Um, I can't do that digitally. I can only do that by hand. Uh, there's no digital interface that can handle the, uh, the amount of dexterity that, that my hand has. It's always a pleasure, and I'm looking for more of this kind of work. I'd like to be drawing Bible comic books or Bible illustrations if you happen to know anyone that has a need for that. If it got a lot of mouths to feed around here, probably 30 or so by now. I don't know if you all caught this or not, but that lady, Stormy, she ended up having to pay him this week. He went to New York, he walked into that courtroom, and while he was in there, she paid him. She paid him the defamation fine that she owed him. That right there throws the whole case in New York out. She held on, doing the wrong thing, for years. Till the minute he walks in there. Then she turned around and paid him. Oh, by the way, I was lying. Here's your money, Trump. But now he's in the court system. Isn't it funny how that works out? When they're being that crooked, they know that they gotta tell you what they're gonna do so that you're complicit in going along with it. Out of control. Out of control. Here now, I figure you've heard me rant enough about Trump and the bizarre events of this week, so I'll let that go. But I'd like to share something with you that Em and I put together for a Greater Idaho Movement. They're helping rural counties in Oregon to seceding from Oregon and joining Idaho. The audience for this is uh, the leftist audience of Portland and Salem, primarily the law legislators over there. And so I uh, hired an actor and we put together this video with my animation. It's fully produced by me. Now again, this one is already sold, boys. But you can find more 
in the description below. Be sure to stick around until after the credits to see some of the upcoming homesteading topics that we'll be bringing to our channel. We got an awful lot of art this week, so let's just get to it. Eastern Oregon and I are not getting along anymore. We don't share the same ideals and they're really holding back our progress. Well, hi, Western Oregon. So what you say is true. We don't share the same ideals any longer and we're really stepping on one another's toes. Why do you keep electing these right-wing representatives who gridlock our state legislature? You just get out of our way and let us finally fix everything. We should. In fact, we could just go and join that red state right over there. You'd be happier with Idaho than you would be with us. We take so much better care of you. Well, you know, it's just really not working out for us either. In fact, 11 of our counties have already voted to go and join Idaho. We don't agree about how civil society should work, and you're costing us a lot of money. In fact, the average wage earner in northwestern Oregon pays $690 in taxes every year to subsidize southern and eastern Oregon. That's not fair. As long as Oregon relies on income taxes, the whole state, including all our low population density areas, will continue to be subsidized by high income areas like Portland. Do you really want to keep spending all that just so you can have us be a part of Oregon? No. Oh? No, if you don't want to be part of Oregon, then we don't need to keep financially supporting you. Uh, we should spend our budget on our local community, on the programs that we value. Well, that would be a lot of money that you could put toward infrastructure development, social wellness programs, and general social equity. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I mean, we could move the state line. The state lines have been moved small distances many times in United States history. Sure. Over here we have hundreds of thousands of people with permanent homes and farms. Our communities are conservative. It would be easier to move an invisible state line than to tear apart each of our communities. Besides, borders are just lines on the map anyway. Yes, that's right. We will still be your friendly agricultural neighbor. And we're only going to be a car ride away. Wait. Yeah? That would mean there wouldn't be very many Republicans in the Oregon legislature. Rural voters and senators wouldn't be bogging down the state legislature and our ballot initiatives and blocking our progress. You really want us to legally par way? Uh, we're not going to bar the door to you or anything. We just want to focus on our own programs over here right now. What do Oregonians need to do in order to see this separation happen? Just contact the president of the Oregon Senate, Rob Wagner, and ask him to give our Greater Idaho Bill a hearing so that we can make our own case. Then, contact your own state legislators and ask them about the Greater Idaho Bill. Visit GreaterIdaho.org for more information. That's GreaterIdaho.org. Did we just agree in common ground? Yeah! Common ground about different grounds. You'll be alright with Idaho. Come visit us anytime. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button below. Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Snow melt and the resulting water we have. Completing the proper permanent sheep enclosure. Supplementing the existing chicken coop with the secondary structure for the meat birds. Construction on the driveway and completion of a tool shed. The spooky old greenhouse. Progression on the office building and gym. It has a long way to go. The chickens are laying again. And the first appearance of another set of baby lambs. Join us next time on Off Grid Artists. <laughs>